morning, good afternoon, good evening. Coming live from Music Row Studios, I am your host, R. Hunter Jr., the truth and not a rumor. Thanks to everyone for rocking with us on the Surround Sound Podcast starting lineup on Facebook Live. Make sure you go and check out the fan page also on Facebook or Instagram. Just search Surround Sound Podcast or um, I'm sure you, there's a link for it on the Facebook page, uh, Surround Sound Podcast fan page. You can just find it. Or, hey, Google it, Google it, Google it. Surround Sound Podcast, just like that. Uh, My beloved producer, Troy. What's going on, Troy? Uh, Just the usual on a Tuesday Tuesday night. (laughs) That's right. That's right. How, we haven't been here in about two weeks. How was the beginning of your July, uh, 4th of July good? My 4th of July was pretty good. It was actually quiet. We uh, just took family together to appreciate uh, what it was to be in this country. That's what's up. Didn't go see like fireworks, that. didn't travel, but uh, we, we kind of gathered together and just, you know. Remember some good times. Yes. That yeah. sounds good. We, I, we read the Declaration of Independence, uh-huh. so understood why the country existed. That's cool. Reminds me a lot of modern politics, but <laughs> that's its own story. In, in itself, in itself. And we'll get into uh, some modern politics. Uh, Al Gore, he he said some interesting things. However, we're going to get to it in just a minute. Fucking four plus one more time. That's right. Fucking four plus one more. First up, NFL news. Comments on the Mike Vick and Colin Kaepernick situation and what Mike Vick said in just a second. First up, Michael Vick's former team. The Falcons, they went 11-5, lost in the Super Bowl to the New England Patriots. Julio, Devontae, and Matt Ryan look to get back into the swing of things in, at atops the NFC South. However, a training camp starts July 27th, and their first preseason game is August 10th. Well, speaking of teams that lost in the, lost in the postseason, uh, the Cowboys, 13-3, looking forward to um, – trying to get further in the playoffs than they did against the Green Bay Packers. They lost on the last second field goal. Training camp for them starts July 24th, and their first preseason game is the Hall of Fame game against the Arizona Cardinals August 3rd. The Bears did the exact opposite as far as records go. The the, the aforementioned Dallas Cowboys, they went 3-13. However, they picked up QB Mitchell Trubisky from UNC, North Carolina Tar Heel, back there in April. Uh, some even had him, Trubisky, that is, as a second-round talent. However, the Bears gave up a lot for him, uh, getting him with the like, second overall pick. Going to see how he pans out. His first day of real training camp practice is July 28th, and his first game is August 10th. Now, the Titans finished 9-7. They had a very good offseason, and even – People are saying, is Marcus Mariota, is Eminem the best young quarterback? You know, you got the Jameis Winstonsons, of the, Winstonsons. Yeah, you got the Jameis Winstons of the world. You got the Matthew Cars of the world. Is Marcus Mariota the best? We're going to see this coming year. The I, I think the, the Titans, and I've been on record to say this, the, ta- the talent that they've added to the roster here in the offseason, defensively and offensively, second to none. They get their first practice July the 29th. First game is August 12th against the New York Jets. Number two, on the sign of the times, we will have Jay-Z's return to prominence. And what does it mean? That's coming up at the, near the end of the show. Number three, NBA. Nike is putting water bottles to good use. Nike is set to take over the, as the NBA's official apparel provider this coming season. Wrote out a fresh new look of jersey this week. Nike said the new jerseys will be partly made out of recycled plastic bottles. Now, this is the unbelievable part. As part of the new deal, which officially begins October 1st, a raised Nike swoosh, which will be on retail versions of jerseys. However, nine teams have struck deals to put a corporate logo on their uniforms. These logos will not appear on jerseys sold by national retailers, but the teams themselves can offer to sell the jerseys with the added patch to fans. Why is it so unbelievable? This is the first major first major league to basically sell the jerseys. Now, when you when you think about NASCAR, when you think about soccer overseas, even soccer, MLS soccer here in the country, in in America, they I mean, it's a patch everywhere with a different logo on it. The NBA is the first of the major four to put a logo during the game. Now, the NFL, 
They have patches of, of, of certain companies on their practice team logos, however, uh, not on the actual team joints. So we're going to see uh, how that how that shakes out. Uh, number four on the Funky 4 Plus One Mo. Speaking of basketball and money, historically, black colleges and universities are shaking things up. They are proposing to start paying players. The proposed league would earn between fifty to $100,000 and allow the players to gain monetary value for signing autographs, endorsement deals, and accepting gifts. They would still be able to declare for the NBA draft without losing their eligibility, reported by Vice Sports. Uh, Swartz says that one of the ways to bust a monopoly is through disruption, and that's the idea here. It seems as easy as one, two, three to execute this plan using these steps. Step one, form an HBCU Exclusive Basketball League. Step two, tell the MCAA to pound sand and pay the nation's very best high school and basketball players to be part of it. Step three, profit. And O has also changed the the face of big-time campus athletics forever. That's courtesy of Vice Sports. I mean, basically they're taking the same model as Uber did, um, do the same thing, however, give the consumer, not I won't even say consumer, give the athlete more of a, a benefit. And in the same way that Uber helped the customer get, gain more of a benefit. We're going to see how that thing shakes out. Andy Schwartz went on to say, HBCUs can be a strong brand that America will like regardless of race. And he went on to say, I think HBCUs are uniquely positioned to see the struggle for college athletes' rights as part of a broader civil rights movement that they are already a part of. Black males make up 56% of college football teams and 61% of college basketball teams. I think amateurism as a demand driver is a fiction, and what actually sells is the blend of college brand value and basketball excellence. While the HBCU's brand today are not as strong as, as the best basketball, you know, predominantly white institutions, they aren't so far away that an infusion of talent won't tip the tables. Monopolies are horrible competitors when they get disrupted. Just ask taxi drivers whether its company responded well to Uber. And the one mo comes from the political front. Most times it's slowly from the president, Donald Trump. The fitness in the politics, the bully, number 45. Well, this time, uh, it doesn't come from him. It comes from Al Gore. Saw Al Gore on a late night talk show. I, it wasn't Kimmel. Uh, it wasn't the other Jimmy Fallon. It was the other guy on CBS. His name is Stephen Colbert. Yeah, I finally got it. Al Gore is on there talking. You know, Al Gore lost the election back mm, some 12, what, no, 16 years ago. And he went into energy. That was like his main thing these last 16 years. Well, Al Gore says that around the nation, energy prices, as far as utilities, have came down. Well, that's kind of odd, Al Gore, being that you were the senator of this here uh, great state of Tennessee. In a very special place, Memphis, Tennessee, they have seen their prices go up. It's ridiculous what's going on as far as MLG and W in Memphis, Tennessee. That's Memphis like gas and water. You heard it right here. And what's also crazy is that the TVA, which is the Tennessee Value Authority, sends power to all the states surrounding Tennessee. You would think that those in-state cities and and power companies would also benefit from this. However, it looks like it hasn't happened. We'll be back with more on the Surround Sound podcast before this double play with the cat fabulous Soul Tape 3 throwback joint, baby.